name is Hafiz. Um, um, apparently, I'm like co-maintainer for the GraphQL library uh, in Go. Um, so what's this about, right? I'm going to rush through because I think there's a lot of things to cover. Uh, so what it's about is about GraphQL by Ingo, right? So um, for GraphQL, so I'm going to talk about about GraphQL, like how uh, it addresses some of the issues that most developers face when they build a REST bag, a bag a web application, or a typical uh, modern web application. And also, uh, because this, since this is a Gopher uh, meetup, so I'm going to put it in context of Go, so how we build a GraphQL server in Go. Right, so this is for uh, it's all for us uh, developers, right? Or basically any, anyone, uh, basically product developers or even architects uh, who's interested interested in like uh, figuring out the uh, another approach to build uh, your web application. So let's start, right? So to give context, right? Uh, typical uh, architecture for web application uh, is like simple, right? So you have your client and server architecture. Your your server most probably will be REST API, most since that's the the facto standard most of the time right now, and you have clients. So in this context, uh, we talk about uh, multiple clients, right? You, it's not just one web application, but you, have, you may have one web application, but you may have like iOS apps or Android apps or even like an app, uh, a client in uh, Raspberry Pi, whatever. And also, um, your server, server is backed uh, by multiple source of data, even microservices, right? Because right now, the microservices architecture is like a big thing right now, especially in Go. Um, okay, so. So what are the common issues uh, that we face as developers when we work with REST APIs, right? So I'm going to argue that most of the common um, issues that we face is multi, uh, multiple round trips when we fetch data and also overfetching of data, right, for our clients. Um, so uh, to be context, let's consider like a simple newsfeed um, application, right? So you have a newsfeed application that your front-end developer wants to render a view of all the newsfeed posted by uh, your user. So you have a list of posts and each post is written by, uh, submitted by a user. So in a REST it, um, architecture, so you have two resources, right? Your user and your post. That's pretty simple. That's the basic you can go with in terms of web application. Um, so let's say we built this application uh, with a REST API. So typically you would design with like, okay, you have, um, so you get a list of posts, uh, uh, okay, list of posts, you get a post for given the UID, even delete and put, and all this nifty REST uh, verbs. Right. Okay, but what happens when we, when your front-end developer wants to uh, render the new script given this uh, REST API? So typically it's going to ask, hey, let's get a list of posts um, for this user and then limit it by 10, for example. Um, so he gets a list of posts, uh, the structure in JSON, and then the structure, you have the ID for the post, and you have the title for the post, um, you have the like count and open ID, right? So, it said, um, so your front-end developer says, yeah, this kind of enough to render my feed, but I need the um, author name and the URL as well. Right? So what he needs to do, for example, most, most cases, so that means he thinks, oh, okay, I'm going to need to make another query to the REST API uh, to get the um, user data for the first post. So it's going to, he makes one REST API query. And yeah, so he gets the ID name, handle, the age. May not, he may not need it for this view, but he gets it because that's what your REST API uh, returns for your user resource, and then he gets the avatar URL. Yeah, so now he gets enough data to render the first uh, post. And then, to render the second post, he realized, oh yeah, he has to make another um, rest, uh, a query. And then, wait, then you have to make another query for each of these posts, right? Right, so this, uh, basically this, um, so um, he realized, uh, okay, he has to make separate requests for each post to get uh, information for his author, that's multiple round trips. And then, he also getting other fields that he may not necessarily need for his view. So that's overfetching. So that's the most two typical uh, issues that you face as the developer. But of course, as engineers, we already have like, solutions to these uh, issues, right? Some common approaches that we may would be like, you know, maybe probably um, instead of, if you allow your get users uh, endpoint to a set array of ideas, right? So you give him a bunch of ideas and then you return to this. Basically, you cut down the number of calls to two calls, right? But that's okay. Um, but that doesn't solve the issues with all fetching. So um, you say, okay, let's set parameters to set fields to return. So basically, your client will say, oh yeah, I want just this field, the ID, the name, and leave out the fields that you don't need. Right? So that's another approach to solve the issue with all fetching. Uh, and then some, um, another approach is basically just, okay, let's create a custom endpoint for your new state uh, queue. So you have a specific endpoint uh, called new state. But then, you realize it's kind of tightly coupled to your, it's too tightly coupled to your UI, right? So imagine you have multiple um, 
clients, the different environments, different platforms. So are you going to do like different uh, endpoints for each of your clients? And how are you going to support it if you have um, different versions? For example, you have a, a iOS app. So um, at this, at this uh, version, you accept all these uh, fields. And then the next version, you decide to add more fields. And so what happens to your old, older version of uh, iOS? Because it's not a web application, so there's no way you can get the later, uh, latest uh, updates. Um, so how, the, how do we proceed from here, right? So um, I'm going to let you see how GraphQL can address some of these issues. So, but first let me talk about what is GraphQL right now, right? So right now uh, GraphQL is actually uh, two things. It's a data query language and a runtime. So it's, it's not a graph database, so that's the first, uh, first misconception of when people read about GraphQL or GraphQL. Right? It's a graph database. No, no, it's not. It's more of a, think about it more like a data fetch API. Um, that gives a query language and runtime. So what you need to know is that a GraphQL query is a string that you can interpret by the server and then returns data in a specific format. Um, so basically, your client sends a query string, GraphQL runtime um, gets that and resolve all the do whatever it needs to do and then returns a decent response. That's pretty easy, right? It's not um, complex whatever. So here's an example query and so basically the query that um, GraphQL the data language that GraphQL uh, Specify is that okay? It looks kind of like JSON-ish, right? But it's basically just the keys for what your data, uh, what your client wants. For example, you want the user with the particular ID, and then uh, I want the ID field, the name, the is your friend or profile picture, and I want it to be in certain size, right? And then you are for that profile picture, and then the result that you get is basically it's kind of it's like it's one-to-one -one parity to your query, right? So as a front-end developer, you doesn't have to care about oh fuck, how I'm gonna like get this uh, data that I need for my view. It's, it's natural for us uh, developers, like okay, JSON is kind of like the factor standard response right nowadays. So if you, see, if you show this to a front developer, you'll be like, oh, this fucking awesome, right? Okay, so why, why does GraphQL fit in, right? So um, uh, previously the architecture, right? basically what you do is like, you have your GraphQL mm -hmm. in, a, in a microservices, but then it's more like a gateway API. You put in between your client, talk to your GraphQL server, and then GraphQL server will um, decide where to get your data from what was also available, your database, or even your, your original REST server, right? And then, how about GraphQL and Go? So, um, sorry. So, GraphQL and Go, right, basically, um, the implementation is kind of simple. You have your client, right, uh, it talks to your, well, probably your web server, HTTP server, you use like an HTTP library that you built in, and for example, it handles the, the queries coming from GraphQL endpoint, and then GraphQL endpoint passes to the handler, which runs the GraphQL runtime, replacing the schema, and then use the schema to resolve the data from the data source, and then returns the JSON response. It's kind of, it's kind of like, um, kind of easy. And then I'm going to show a quick demo. But first, um, let me recap the issues, uh, the two issues that uh, GraphQL address, which is multiple round trips and overfetching of data. So just keep that in mind. And so the demo, right? So I'm going to show, first I'm going to show um, a simple micro, micro body app. It's similar to what I showed just now. Uh, quick GraphQL serving Go. Um, some queries that like, show the difference between REST versus uh, GraphQL queries, and probably by the time you see how, how clients can adapt to changes in requirements. All right, right. Okay. So, so, all right. So uh, I wrote a quick um, Twitter clone <coughs> yesterday night. So basically, this is it, right? It's similar to what uh, I show you. What, what you need. Basically, this uh, application have two main uh, models. It's basically just uh, the views and the post. Uh, so right now it's using GraphQL, right? Okay, let me show you the model for this. It's kind of, um, I think people like code, so. Okay, so the model for this. Oh, sorry, can you stay on one side? Oh, sorry, sorry. My thought is in a way. All right, so yeah. So you have your code struct, um, your user, you have uh, ID and name. Uh, I put some JSON tags because um, yeah, it's, it's kind of essential in GraphQL, uh, go. Right, so you have your two, um, you, uh, resources, right? So how do you write the schema for Go? Oops. <coughs> right. Uh, so um, so before once we start right, to start writing um, graph, you know, GraphQL server, you know, um, so you start with a, a schema. So you design, design the schema. So basically, this is uh, this part is the GraphQL schema language. Is, it does nothing. It's just a way for you to like represent uh, your schema in like a notation so that your developer can see, right? So, but it's similar to your Go, our Go struct, right? So you have to, so it's, it's the thing is just saying that, okay, I have a type, right? If, uh, in Go, GraphQL, everything is type. So even your root query, uh, I'll show you what's a root query later. Your root query is a type. 
and the map, for example, I have this query, and I'm gonna, but this query has a post query, which is uh, we want to map into your uh, get list of posts. And then you have a post with uh, it takes in uh, ID, which in integer that returns, returns a, a post of type here. And then you have a user uh, field that takes in the ID and then returns the user type here. So the user types uh, and the post type are defined here in the schema. So you notice that in type user type in GraphQL here that I wrote, uh, have most of it has one-to-one -one mapping to the Go struct, except that I have two extra things, a few things for that are added um, for fun for the fun of it, right? So I will see how I will show you how uh, this gets resolved later in the query. Um, so you have that um, schema. So what you do is you're gonna implement it in GraphQL. It's in GraphQL Go. Um, it's basically declarative, right? Uh, so you declare what fields do you have, what uh, how you resolve the fields. <coughs> uh, let me show you the graph, the, the, the root query first. So basically the way you define it, um, okay, you say you give a name and description and then you try to be descriptive because the description helps with the documentation, right? So uh, compared to REST, REST API, uh, usually what, uh, for documentation what they do is you end up having to use Blueprint or Swagger to man manage your documentation. But now what happens here is like your schema itself is your documentation, right? So there's less thing for you to maintain, one more less thing for you to maintain. So what you need to do is just code, right? So you write both schema.go and schema.txt? So this command is that you don't need to write this. This is just a, a way for you to, uh, it's just a blueprint right, for you to, okay. so it's for you to see, okay, what, um, it's, for, it's a planning tool. So for you, like, okay, what, what kind of queries I want to make, what kind of objects you have. Uh, if you want to skip this, well, it's fine. Yeah. Right? You can't generate schema. Uh, actually, there's, 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 there's some um, efforts into doing that, right? Especially in J uh, JavaScript, they are uh, taking the graph uh, schema language and then generate the code. Yeah. Uh, I think someone wants to do it in Go, but yeah, but, but it's, it's like a luxury. It's not like yeah, it's already right? yeah. Um, So the essential thing is schema Go. Yeah. yeah. So uh, basically, let's look at the user and one, right? So how? Okay. So for example, this um, user field which is a user type later, right, which is this type. Um, and it takes in the ID, which is an integer type, and then how you resolve it, right? Because GraphQL is agnostic uh, in terms of data source, so it doesn't care what it is, MongoDB, uh, SQL, SQLite, in-memory database, or whatever, even uh, another server, another service could be your data source. So what you do is you just implement it uh, as you need, right? So for example, uh, for my um, application, um, basically it's just an in-memory database. Uh, so I take in the ID and then I just get the user from the ID right, and then return it. So, uh, but it returns the uh, this user struct, right? And then, but how? But you need to do a mapping between this struct to GraphQL um, type. For example, uh, this user type, and then basically you just define this user type, uh, and then you just map it between. For example, this ID maps to this ID, right? You have to. Map, um, I'm using JSON tag to map the IDs and. Um, the field in, um, in your struct. Um, so basically, for, the, for example, this ID, I know it's an it's uh, it's integer type, so I just specify, oh, it's an integer type, right? Um, <laughs> when your developers read it, it's like they know it's, uh, it's an integer type, so it, there's no confusion there. Confusion there. Um, it gives this extra, um, very strong type um, capabilities to your API. <coughs> and for this, I sh I've shown you an example of a uh, extra field, for example, the post really is not part of the user struct itself, but I'm allowing the API to GraphQL to return a post for a given user. So basically, uh, what I have is, um, in this example, it takes a limit, a number of posts that you can uh, return. I take that, right, uh, because I previously returned the micro, uh, micro blog user, this struct, I take it and then take the ID and just get the user or uh, post for that user. Okay, I think enough for the uh, implementation, right? I'm going to show you an example of the query itself. Right, um, so this is the app. Um, okay, I can show you the... The uh, response that you get from your GraphQL. Right? So it makes... Uh, this is query, right? I'll show you the query later. Um, and then the response is basically JSON. Right. And it, it's, it returns exactly what I need. For example, I need the author, I need the avatar URL, I need the handle, I need the ID. 
right? Uh, I need the content. Then you remember I have other fields here, like total, total followers and stuff, which I don't need right now, so I don't get it. I don't ask for it, I don't get it. Um, GovGirl has this freaking good, freaking cool tool, right? It's called GraphiCal. It's like a working on GovGirl. Basically, it adds an I in between the H and Q, so it becomes graphical. Because it's a graphical interface, right? Okay. Yeah. So, um, so, okay, let me show you example queries for. So, you saw the new speed um, view, right? So, for example, if I were to do it in REST, so I have to make a multiple query, and then these are the kind of data I get. So, I, need to, I have to make a get um, plural post, and then I have to make a get users for a given ID and stuff. But for if I were to use GovGirl, the query is kind of simple. You can see why it is. Uh, this is a post. I'm going to limit by 10. I want the ID for that post. I want the content, which is the text. I want the author. For the author, specifically, I want the ID, the name, the handle, and the avatar URL. So specify the query. And then that's what I get. I get exactly that. Right, um, as when you compare with uh, REST API, you know, uh, for me, like using it, it's like it brings the joy to like, actually using it. Like, it gives a better experience as a, as a developer, which, which uh, gives uh, is the reason why I'm so excited about GraphQL. You know? um, yeah, so this is the data I get. So and if, if you pause for a while and ask why you're using GraphQL, yeah. it's basically a ORM, Object Visual Mapper, Data Mapper kind of layer. Kind There's of. another abstraction. It's more like a data fetch API on top of that. It's, it's not on the bit, but it's, it's basically your API gateway, right? So instead of using REST API for your gateway. Is there a reason the raw, low-level REST API? Yeah. You're abstracting one level using the general purpose. Yeah, language. pure language, yeah. yeah. I'm not using it. Uh, so let's, oh, I forgot to say that like, this graphical is not done by me. It's like it's uh, open source like, technology done uh, by Facebook. By Facebook. Right, right. Yeah, so I did, what I did is like they really say a uh, reference uh, implementation in JavaScript. Right. So what I did was like, I want it in Go. It's like, okay, let's do this in Go. This is what happened. So we have a graphical. It doesn't decrease the number of REST queries, right? It's still have not the same number of REST queries on the web. No, it's not just really one query, which is uh, to, to, the, to the client is one query, but GraphQL is making a lot of queries in the backend. Um, yeah, the backend. So it doesn't have to, basically, it's resolving all of this. But it's like bare metal, right? It's like, for example, you don't need to make a REST API query. Let's say you want to resolve the user, you don't need to make a REST API query. It's basically just every query to database. But GraphQL does make the REST query. Yeah. No? no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. <coughs> so if you look at the implementation, it's just right? replacement for REST. Yeah. Now, now, if your resolver calls is, REST. Call, it, it is calling a service that only speaks REST, then it will call REST. Yeah. But if your resolver is calling a service that speaks RabbitMQ, it will call RabbitMQ. Or yeah. RabbitMQ, or whatever that that blitz can speak SQL, whatever you want to do yeah. in there. Yeah. So, so it's a complete replacement. Yeah, complete replacement. Uh, for example, right, in this example, this um, the request comes from the client to the GraphQL uh, server. So the GraphQL passes the query, and then it, what you do is you you as a developer determine how you're going to get the data. So for example, in this example, my data is in memory, right? So I don't need to make another recipe or query. Yeah. It's up to you. But your resolver, will, let's say, calling into a MySQL or PostgreSQL database, yeah, you so return the whole row of data anyway. Yeah, yeah. And so then you throw it away. Yeah, and then but if in terms of from the client perspective, right? From the client perspective, this is different. Yes, of course, yes. I agree. And also, um, it protects the data because it doesn't send it to the client. For example, the ID information, when you ask for ID and the rest, you get more information than the client. Yeah, uh, so that's the whole fetching part, right? Uh, I can show you an example like that. For example, okay. let's say you have this um, new speed um, app. Let's, let's, let's think, think of it as, a, as an iOS app, right? Yeah. Eventually, uh, so let's say your product developer, you want to make another version of this app, right? Uh, for example, I want to instead of just putting number of likes, I want to show the actual uh, the like uh, who actually likes this thing. Right? For example, I want to put a uh, picture of all the avatars of all the people who uh, your user who likes this post. So, um, for example, right? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. So these are the given list of posts, right? And I know from my from my graphic career, right? Um, I noticed that for list of posts, there's a um, a field for called like by, right? That returns a list of users. So from there, what I can do is, okay, I can say, I want like by, right? Oh, there's autocomplete, which is fucking awesome, right? Um, so like by, so what like by is a user um, type, right? So okay. what, what fields do I need to uh, return? So I want, I want to get the name, yep. I want to get the URL, right? 
uh, as the client, uh, as the developer, right, you just need to specify what you declare your data, the shape of data you want, data you want, um, which is great. Um, so, for example, for this data version of my um, app, so basically, it, both of them requires the same um, talks to the same GraphQL server. Both of them get uh, both of them specify exactly what they need, and then they get what they need. They don't get uh, extra data or whatever. Um, so that's uh, address the overfetching issue. Right? Um, else, what else I can talk about? I think, um, yeah, yeah, so I think I covered most of stuff that I want to talk about. If you have any question, you can at this point then. Um, if not, um, oh yeah, you yeah, run yeah. multiple instances of the graph also. So you don't need to, so the server itself can be an HTTP server, right? What it is actually is just a runtime, just a library. That, let me show you the implementation, right? So you made this my main. I'm using Chi server, a Chi server for my routing library, so it doesn't have any doesn't matter, right? So I'm saying, okay, um, I want for this Kafka endpoint, right? I have this sub GraphQL handler. For the other parts, um, it's just a static handler to serve my static files. Um, and then you just use HTTP to listen and serve it. first this serve this request. So for this serve GraphQL handler, it's basically using um, this GraphQL Go library, right? Uh, it takes in the request. Uh, this is a helper to pass the request, right? So the request is actually like something like this, right? And then it has query library. So basically, it uh, passes that to give you three things: your query, uh, the query string itself, some variables, and operation name. Those are kind of not needed right now. But so that that, that what it does, uh, and then basically you pass in the schema that you defined just now, and then yeah, the request string, and then you pass it to GraphQL. GraphQL does its magic and then returns the result. And you just return that you just basically just a library to you plug it in. You put in your string, you get your result. Right? Um, is this stateful? Stateful. Uh, so it's for right now it's per request uh, per request context, right? So it's it doesn't there's there's no So if you have a, if you've got a post operation in the GraphQL. Okay. So right now what I'm showing is just the query uh, a get, uh, operation, right? right? So uh, in GraphQL, there's another operation called mutation. So whatever mutation, um, it's the same thing. The way you define it is the same, just that how you implement the resolve function, it's up to you. Uh, so uh, in GraphQL, for mutation queries, um, mutation operations, they guarantee that your, your, uh, your fields are resolved sequentially first. That means if you have right project operation, right, you want it to be in sequence. And then for, but for normal read query, it's, it's up to you. Uh, you can you can do it uh, concurrently as well because reading is reading, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, and then GraphQL, there's another experimental feature which is for subscription. It's more for sockets, uh, more for long term uh, communication. But right now it's still um, under RFC, but it's not. It's there, but there's n no one has actually figured out like how the best way to use it or not, right? Uh, but just something that you have yeah, a question. The uh, fetching of the users, pulling up the users' data, oh, um, they smartly patch it to the database. So, so GraphQL doesn't uh, specify that. So that's your implementation. How you're gonna do that, right? So, um, yeah. So basically, let's say, let's say this is a mutation query, right? You will get this. It's the same thing. So once you get the result, you got your data. You got the query from the user. You got your um, arguments. Could be the data that you want to um, modify. Right? And then you do it yourself, you implement yourself. So GraphQL is doesn't specify the database, the data source, how in fact in fact the demo uh, protocol it doesn't specify you, you may not you may not want to use HTTP, you might want to use um, web sockets for your communication. It doesn't matter, right? So you only specify the data query and how you resolve the uh, schema. Yeah. Uh, you can go ahead with this. I have three questions. <laughs> Okay, I have a, a simple, silly question yeah. I remember. What are you using to generate your random data? Because it's funny. Oh, okay. Um, so there's this website called Hips. It's like, it's Hipster, it's some Laurel. Hipster, some Laurel. Yeah, so, yeah, I think generally just copy paste and then pass it and then put it in my data. Yeah, anyway, pretty awesome. Thanks. Yes, sir. Yeah. It'll come to my Okay. Yeah, oh, whoever. Oh, thank you. So, uh, to me, yeah, it's really fancy, I love it. Uh, is it a replacement for the interfacing part of the logic, right? Uh, just, just your API layer, right? So, uh, my question is that, uh, except to, to do these things in HTTP library, is it possible to do in, like, 
you know, put the mobile, gRPC, sort of thing. Yeah, you, you have the input, you have the output, is it possible to Yeah, but it's possible, right? So basically, you just write, instead of using HTTP um, library, right? So basically, you write whatever protocol you mm -hmm. So you receive the data, you pass it to CraftTail library as a string, right? No, no, if you're using the mobile, then uh, basically, you have defined your input, you have defined your output, you know, for the buff, you, does it auto generate it? No, no, it doesn't. So, so uh, the, the spec specifies that the query has to be a string, right? So, okay. how eventually it has to be a string. Oops. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it has to be a string. That's the only requirement. And then it's the string string out, right? Yeah, string in, uh, string, string out. out. Kind of string yeah, out, but it's JSON. Uh, this is JSON. Yeah, that's as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You mentioned RFC. This is, this is all, there are RFCs for the GraphQL yeah. and everything. Yeah, so um, there's a, the website, so uh there's a spec. That it's, it's still a living spec. Um, the first spec was. Um, was published July last year. Uh, the third one was second one was October. So recently April, they just released a new spec. So it's still kind of new, right? Um, but most of the stuff it's just adding on to the spec, right? Um, okay. So if you 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 want to contribute to, to it, they just go to Facebook graph, uh, GitHub, reach to the spec. And so um, this the project that we're doing right now is kind of separate from graph all itself. It's just us uh, looking at the um, spec and then yeah, just looking at it yourself. Okay. Because we wanted for uh, because the the first invitation was released for Node.js. Um, I have issues for Node.js. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I kind I kind of I was in a phase where I uh, kind of drawn to Go. So I'm like the graphical. It, it's kind of like Go is kind of feels right for web server applications of application. So I'm like oh, yeah, this is something that's kind of missing. And I work with someone uh, who was working on it halfway, and then we work together, and this is what we have right now. Um, stable, stable. Right so now. right now, um, stable and stable. All the tests are we, we actually mean tests are we passing we put all the tests for the graphical spec. So it's running. Um, it's it's stable. It's in. It's running. Uh, I have a, I have one application that's running in production right now, but with low volume, just so that I can test this. So because but this is premium. I think it's less less than ten months, right? Uh, that's the thing. Uh, why the one reason I came here is because uh, looking for more. People to contribute to the library. So, um, so you guys have more because uh, the switch those have been working go for more than a year or more, two years, right? You might have more insights. Uh, so for example, um, one of the issues that we have, so have right now is uh, the ordering of the ordering of the JSON map that we have right now. Because uh, we go maps are the, the, the order is undeterministic, right? Undeterministic, right? Yes. But uh, there's a way. I mean, GraphQL spec doesn't specify that you may or may not do that, but it's kind of for developer experience. It's, it's good to have it in. Um, in order, but uh, yeah, um, if you have any ideas about how to like marshal a struct into a JSON in order, I think we have some ideas, but we want to get better um, approach to doing that, like marshaling. How, how do you handle slow queries or unresponsive resolvers? Um, for unresponsive resolvers, I think we leave it to the network library itself. Yeah, but you kill your whole yeah. you kill your whole integration service if yeah, yeah. So, you ask for something that takes forever to come back. The service dies. Yeah, it's the same thing with like normal. If you take out the graphical equation of it, right? If you just use a network, uh, net yeah, it's the same thing, right? So, yeah. graphical itself, yeah, it's just a thing that that just passes your query and then helps you write how you're going to resolve your data. Uh, your yeah. Query today. yeah. But if, if I would have the data management layer like that, I would like to have some nice keys like yeah. circuit breakers and yeah. uh, so that long queries just get killed and say, sorry, I, I can't get the data for you. Well, you can do that actually because uh, GraphQL allows you. Okay, that, 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 that you have to implement it yourself. Um, but one way, one thing is that uh, GraphQL for you, you solve this, right? You can return a, an error, so it can be any error, and, and that that will be part of the um, yes, itself. For example, let me show you. Uh, let's say for example, I'm asking for post that is not there, right? A given ID or I know that it doesn't well, have an ID. Like yeah. yeah. So uh, let me see. Uh, right. Oh, sorry. Ah, right. So the, you can return an error. So you can handle errors gracefully, but just it's just how you handle it, right? So for example, like for long term, or for resolvers that takes too long, yeah, you can return an error immediately. Then just then your client can handle that. So GraphQL is like uh, in the middle layer. I mean, before reaching the database. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's basically yeah, so it's it's a, a data data integration layer. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it's 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 the same layer where you put your soap. 
or your yeah. rest. Yeah, it's exactly right. It's, it's, it's just Another layer. any of those layers that you want, you can use GraphQL instead. Yeah. So the KV as a gateway API, right? So KV API means that yeah. it's an API that talks to a lot of other APIs, for example. So that to be a wrapper, Kafka could be that wrapper for the, those APIs. For example, if, um, you know, you guys know about Delta, Gov, and Street, right? So they have a bunch of APIs. Yeah. So uh, what I did was I implemented implemented in GraphQL. So I can query all that API here, right? For example, I want to get the environment, I want to get the four day uh, forecast. All right, I want to get the PM, PMI, the PSI and stuff. So I can do that, and then let's take each of this. Actually, one create one API create to the database, right? But um, I make it so that it's the local resolver um, will do it concurrently, and for duplicate of queries, it's it just uh, coalesce to one query. Right? For example, uh, that's done in, uh, in the resolver or that, in GraphQL. That's not GraphQL. That's my which okay, my user, so I have my own client that does okay. all that. Yeah. So GraphQL doesn't care about your network, it doesn't care about your database or whatever. It's just Data query, the runtime run to pass that query. It's types and resolvers, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, it's in Go. Yeah. Uh, question. So, yeah. uh, sorry. Am I? Thanks, Wayne. I think you're alright. Uh, so, uh, does it do input validation? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, not validation for the query, not for, for example, um, for the range, probably like. Uh, you know, I can specify it as an integer, but it shouldn't be more than a thousand. Yeah, for example, um, okay, um, the, there's validation uh, built into GraphQL. Bejo uh, will be the query, or how you form the query, and also the type. For example, if your query, query right, um, requires, uh, for example, this particular query, takes in a date time um, input, right, which, uh, is, which is a, oh, hey, someone's stepping on my mouse. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, so this uh, is of type date and time string, which is my own custom type, right? So I I do my own validation for this custom custom type. Okay. Um, yes. And then if if uh, if the user input something is not what you expect, then we just throw an error. For example, this ID is a expects an integer. If I put in a string, it will complain. But in a graceful way, right? Uh, a message. Um, this argument ID has in the value expected in. Um, we, but this is built into GraphQL, right? Yeah, input validation in terms of pipes, uh, in terms of um, web range and stuff. Uh, so you can implement yourself using, you can define your own uh, input types and you can do oh, it. Oh, okay. Define your own input types, okay. Got it. That's my question. It's basically a no program, and that's also a weakness. Okay, I think you partially answered my question. That like, mm -hmm. for example, uh, by using the graph uh, query, right, the resolver will send a multiple query to the database. Yeah. For example, we have a ten post, and each post have uh, like one hundred line. So we have to send around like few hundred query to the database. How to use? How to so solve? that's the implementation. For example, oh, doesn't matter. <laughs> so for example, for my data, I'll go um, GraphQL endpoint, right? So each of the end. Uh, fields, right? It's a separate API query, right? So to GraphQL doesn't specify, okay, uh, I'm going to do it for you, but you as an implementer, right, will decide, okay, so if I have all this query, right, I have my own logic to coalesce all this into one query to batch it. Right? Yeah, everything is a bad cache D. Yeah. Uh, for JavaScript, yeah, GraphQL, someone did a data loader or a batch query loader that does that automatically, but for Go, there's no one has done it before, but if you want to do it, go ahead and do it, please. Do you have a, uh, like, yeah, post? Uh, post query or post action or something like that, or post method or post hooking. So after like after you resolve everything right, you run another implement another code at the end. Of the oh no, no. Uh, no, 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 that isn't isn't. Um, the only place that you think you can hook is the resolve function, right? Yeah, yeah resolve function. You can wrap. You can wrap that. Yeah, you can wrap that in something else. But it's oh. not the last thing that you have to cycle, so what we ask is that can we like put multiple events not during different lifecycles? It may not be in GraphQL itself, but for example, um, in your, it could be in your, your, uh, server. your routing so library, for example, right? My routing library that uh, accepts middleware and then a post middle uh, of, a post middleware afterward. So you can do that after the query. Is that about like post, middle, and after? Yeah, life cycle. <laughs> yeah, right. So basically, it runs the middle way after the request life cycle. Mm -hmm. But that's not that's not rough, you know. I have a slightly sideways question oh. here on answering. What what you you mentioned microservices quite a bit, and uh, do you have a are you using any other frameworks here? Uh, or? So right now, 
My thing is like I'm not using any framework for anything. Um, I got to like, do this live and stuff. This is a framework, right? So it's not only framework. Uh, library. Yeah, library. it's just a library, right? It's a library. Yeah. 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 It's a library. Yeah. Yeah. It's a library. 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 So we have a GitHub repos, it's called GraphQL Go, and then the library is called Grop, uh, GraphQL. Uh, right now, we're waiting, there's a few commits here are pending, because our goal right now is to reach parity with GraphQL JS, uh, which is GraphQL library for Node.js, um, which is moving very fast. But right now, the thing is, we are all like, uh, kind of doing for fun, not for fun, but in our own time. So um, yeah, if you have more contributors, so it's gonna help, anyone who might help us, please do. Especially documentation, like we you know, it's just kind of fast. This it kind of works, but uh, yeah. But we do have examples. That's the main thing. Um, but then again, uh, yeah, we more good to try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, interested to know is there any benchmark? Okay, uh, benchmark. So okay, first let me talk about our goals right now. Right. So right now we are paying you. Know, our goal right now is actually correctness and performance with this right now. So performance wise. It's a good thing, but it's not our goal right now. But someone did a benchmark recently to compare our library with like GraphQL JS library, right? But the thing is, uh, uh, it seems to be faster, like way way faster. But the problem is, the test itself is just a hello world, so we're not sure. Benchmarking is hard. Yeah, the benchmarking is hard, right? Because it depends on the what case. Yeah. Like um, you know how much overhead this adds to. Okay. Uh, that's some overhead. That's, um, for example, there's a lot of uh, using reflection and a lot of marshalling to JSON. So that that's a layer, right? Uh, I'm not gonna say like that's super bare metal. Um, what can say? Okay, I can tell the the whole structure architecture for the library, which is uh, so it takes a string. There's a parser that turns the string into an AST tree, and then from the AST tree, it's got um, it takes it, it is an executor to the AST tree and go through all the little fields and stuff and figure out which one to resolve and stuff. That returns it. Um, um, but there's a lot of reflection right now. Um, yeah, um, yeah, performance we can we can guarantee because it's still going on. But we try to at least it's not super bad. But, uh, so for example in uh, MVP, and if you're talking about input string within like uh, MVP kilobytes, uh, what's the overhead until you co cause your resolver? Uh, so can you repeat the just so what's the overhead in terms of? Uh, so like I said, right, it's um, string, right? There's a parser which passes the string a bit into an ASD tree, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, that part is a bit, uh, bit in Go, but someone wrote a C library for that. So probably, we, which is probably going to be faster, right? So that part is in terms of NS or NS? Oh, NS. Uh, uh, so NS, right? It's, term, it's still term of, uh, terms of NS. Oh, okay. Actually, the benchmark is not But take it with a salt, okay, so salt, because it's not, 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 um, and performance. If someone did a blah blah blah, right? So you have the graphical JS benchmark. Apparently, uh, yeah. It, so in terms of, because once again, it's one thousand bars in terms of. But then for graphical, at least the latest version is like this much. We serve like forty one k requests versus that is four k, which is not that bad. We still outperform JS. Uh, so the yeah yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, this second thing is more about our data branch, but this is a data PR that is pending that should uh, resolve some of the issues with performance. But then again, um, yeah, if you can help us in terms of performance, yeah, go ahead. Because honestly, I'll, I've been using Go for like about a year. So anyone with more than two years, go ahead, can help us. Yeah. Right. Good. Uh, I think that's it. Um, last words, all right? Blah, 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 and then the one was next. Uh, if you're just, uh, I'm going to put up this slide. Uh, if you're interested in GraphQL, you can see, look, look at the GraphQL uh, library, and then there's Twitter, there's a lot of chatter. Um, just hashtag GraphQL, even Medium. And then you can go to my website, there's a couple, couple of articles on GraphQL. And for, uh, if you're interested in GraphQL, but you don't, need, you don't care about using Go, there's other libraries, Node.js, Ruby, Python, Scala. I like Sun Korea because the, the interface is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, you, you cannot talk that because he is a gold. Yeah. No, but <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, I don't, uh, yeah, the reason the reason why I'm here is like looking for more contributors, right? Um, still pretty pretty new. 
Um, so if you want to contribute, just to, uh, just read the code, uh, just submit a PR, uh, come ping me, and Chris Raymond, uh, he, was, he was one of the other uh, maintainers. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put it up on GitHub and if anything, come to me and say hi, and exchange cards and hit me up on Twitter. Alright. Yeah. Good. Thank you.